Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is the second part of the solution to the isogram challenge. I'm trying to keep both videos independent, so I may do a little explanation here. Right, so isograms. So basically, they are words where the letters occur same number of times, okay? So if you take the word person, for example, there are six letters, and each of them occur once. So one, 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 one. That's the reason it's an isogram. The G, if that's how it's pronounced, it has three Gs and it has three e's right so there are two letters but each of them are called three times because it's three three you know that's an isogram so anyone where they don't occur same number of times it isn't an isogram so basically we are trying to filter you know out the words from column a that are isograms and that's what we have in column b i've solved it first of all you know with some interesting formula constructs and this one i'm going to use m mod matrix multiplication but let's start up the formula and see what's really going on the first thing of course would be to strip out the letters one after the other so there you know you use like a mid construct right okay so sequence you know length of the string right basically okay so that's everything the alphabets are stripped out one after the other on this side it's like you're trying to create a grid you know like a multiplication table right on this side you can do a transpose of it right you want a shorter construct to use to roam. Well, it saves you maybe about two or three alphabets. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> right. Okay, so now that you have that, what you are testing is you want to test in one fell swoop. You know, if all these alphabets that are arranged vertically are the same as the ones arranged horizontally. So you are just going to do this. This is like the beauty of dynamic arrays and the fact that it's peel and you can see it. You know, nothing better than that. Okay, so you can see here on this first row, which is for V, you can see there's a true here and there's also a true here. Those two trues are where, you know, I mean, the vertical and the horizontal are equal. So it means that you have two Vs, basically. So if you were to sum up each of these rows based on the trues, that tells you the count for each of them. That would work, you know, if you're just doing it here on the grid. But in a formula, you know, const uh, construct or context, you know, that's not how you approach it. So this way, you kind of use the M mode, okay? So if you want to get, what you're trying to get out is really for each of these rows, you want to get, the, you know, the count, which is basically a sum right in here and the matrix multiplication does that it multiplies the two you know elements of the matrix and kind of sums them together so what you need to do is first of all be able to create here a sequence of like one 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 which is easy to do because you can just take for example um you know that same sequence you know of length let's just use the same thing okay so you know it gives you one to eight and what you then do is that you just raise this to the power of zero okay and you have one 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 so what you now do is you do a multi matrix multiplication where you take these elements so you take these elements right that's the first one and you multiply it by this so it's like in this case an eight by eight matrix by an eight by one matrix it will give you an eight by one which is what you want but the first answer here would be surprising but not to me anyway why is this happening that's because you have a boolean here you know you're multiplying true and false which m mod doesn't like so what do you do you need to find a way to convert this into numbers so basically you can do this okay so now you now have you know the count so this is telling you that yes v occurs twice i occurs twice and so on once you have this you know it follows the same logic as before you can then do a unique of it okay if you do a unique of this right if it gives you one number, then it means basically all those numbers are the same. If it gives you multiple numbers, then they are not the same. That's the logic of it. So we are going to apply it in, you know, just one place now. But we will start off with one cell first. When we do it in one cell, we'll use the map function to extend that transformation, the calculation we've done to the other cells. So I'm going to start up, you know, with a variable. I can just create a variable that creates for me, you know, maybe the sequence, for example, of this okay so let's spew this out so we see what's going on here so this one just gives me you know one to eight all right okay so now what do i need i need to then get you know my vvn right which is like using the mid function i can use the mid function and say mid of you know that cell a5 instead of doing sequence length this that's already the variable a right that's what i just defined above and then do one meaning one character from each point okay so you have this remember you know what we just walked through 
after creating this you then need to also transpose it and then compare both so i may use this variable more than once so i may decide to make it you know um, a variable so i can make it b okay so what i want to test if you remember what i just did was i'm testing if b is equals to to row of what of b that was what i did so which is if you have Vivian spewed horizontally and spewed vertically, you are now testing. So it will create that grid for you. Now, that grid will give you trues and falses. Okay? That's what you put into the M mode. So the M mode goes in here. This is the first element that you need for the M mode. But don't forget that M mode doesn't like booleans. So I have to convert this into what? Uh, numbers. Okay? So that's the first element. The second element was where I multiplied it by 1, 1, 1, 1, occurring 8 times right but don't forget i already created a sequence here which was what one two three four five six seven eight which is my variable a so i can raise that a to the power of zero that will give me you know the one 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 i need as many times as the length of that string okay so once i do this let's close which of the brackets is that i feel like i'm missing one bracket oh yes i see it okay <laughs> all right okay so basically now i've gotten you know the count so this count is actually showing me for each of the alphabets right so for the first alphabet it happens two times the next two times and all of that once you have this you know it's pretty much the same you take a unique of this you know you just take a unique of this so you see you know what that list gives you okay and then you do a count over this to now see how many elements do i have in there right okay and this gives you one so this is really what you need okay you can take this to other cells and just see what's going on there right so that's it you can see any one that gives you one it means that the count of the letters is the same across all the letters so basically you know that's an isogram for you the others are not isogram so once you've done this and this works for one cell you know then you can then use the map function to have it you know go across all the cells in one formula right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down. I'm going to use the map function. I'm going to say map and I'm going to select the entire array. Right. Okay. And then I use the lambda function and I give a variable. So what this variable is basically is representing at each point of the iteration, each of these elements of the array. So the first time it goes in, P will represent A2, which will be the word dialog. It will then perform this whole transformation we just did on dialogue, on that word dialogue. It will give us a number. Yeah, it should give us a number one or two or three or whatever. Okay, and based on that number, we will know if it's an isogram or not. So, if you remember the one I did just now, I used A5 for my sample, but now that variable has not been represented by you know P. So, it means that everywhere I have A5, that's the easy way to just transform it from a single cell into you know multiple cells. I take this to P. I take this, you know, to P. So basically, it's saying that for P, which in this case represents first of all A2, perform this transformation on it. Then go to A3, perform the same transformation, and give me the results for each of them. Okay, so let's close uh, the bracket there. Close this. Right, let me just take it to where it should be. Right, so basically, for each of them, this is telling you, you know, as in if it has unique number of counts or not. Okay, so this is the perfect feed for our filter function what does the filter function need the filter function we are filtering you know the words here where the count is one when the count is one it means that you know the letters occur the same number of times so basically on top of all of this you know you're just going to put the filter function so you're going to do a filter and you're going to filter a2 to a10 right where all this is equals to one or where one equals to all of this anyone is fine so that's basically it and we're done. That's how you get it done with M malt. So the trick here, you know, was really just to use M malt to get those counts. And the rest of it was the same as before, which is you use a unique, you know, and then you use a count A on top of that. Some people could decide, oh, no, instead of using a count A, you know, you can just see in whatever array that spews, you know, how many rows does he have? If the number of rows equals to one, it's the same thing, you know, basically. So you could have done that, you know, because sometimes some people are really finicky about having 
shortest formula, you know, so they try to save a lot of characters. So here where I used, you know, to rule, you know, I could have used transposed, right? But that would give me more characters. But the point is, it's not just about having, you know, the shortest formula. The shortest formula must also be, you know, robust and efficient, right? So once you satisfy the efficiency and robustness, then, you know, you can then face the length. Okay, so that's how you do it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. You know, you can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.